Hello, it's 10 p.m. in Washington, 3 a.m. in London, 5 in the morning in Sudan, where the United Nations is to start pulling out non-essential stuff from the troubled region of Darfur after the International Criminal Court called for the arrest of the Sudanese president, Omar al-Bashir. The court accuses Mr. al-Bashir of genocide, crimes against humanity and war crimes. The BBC's Hilary Anderson began reporting on Darfur five years ago. She recently returned to the region. The ICC has used her material to help gather evidence. It's a long way to fall. Today, Sudan's president, Omar al-Bashir, has been named an international war criminal, and the accusations are monumental. The prosecutor of the International Criminal Court says President al-Bashir has masterminded a genocide in Darfur. I just submit an application against Omar Hassan Ahmad al-Bashir for genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. Over the last five years, hundreds of black African villages in Darfur have been burnt down. This is what Darfur looks like now. An estimated 300,000 people are dead. More than two million people have been driven from their homes. Most of them are black Africans. President Bashir says this is a legitimate attempt to put down a regional rebellion. A documentary I made for the BBC's Panorama in 2004 is part of the evidence in the International Criminal Court's case. We went to the remote mountains of Jebel Mara. Hundreds of women had heard we were coming. We asked just the women who had had children killed to gather. Did she lose any children? After an hour, we'd counted 80 children dead in Kidinir alone. And we hadn't counted them all. A month ago, Panorama returned to Darfur to find this. These were the homes of 3,000 people. The village was called Gosmino. It happened in February. A villager overheard one of the commanders giving orders. Kill everyone, he heard him say. <laughs> President Bashir's government is defiant. It says it doesn't recognize the court's statement. Just weeks ago, Bashir stood by his government's other named war criminals, men also accused of orchestrating mass killings and rape. In the name of God, we are not going to hand over any Sudanese person. This man, Ahmed Haroun, was named a war criminal last year, but he's not in jail. He's got a top government job. He's in charge of the camps for the displaced people. On the outskirts of this camp, Kalma, Genjavid militia roam. Haroun is part of the government network that deploys these militia. The people in the camps know if they leave its boundaries, they'll be punished. In May, 10 women and girls left the camp to get firewood. We didn't manage to escape. They held us and beat us. After that, they raped us. Tonight, the UN, which has a peacekeeping force in Darfur, gave orders to pull out all non-essential staff. There are fears of a violent backlash after today's accusations. President Bashir will be hoping he can broker a deal to delay prosecution proceedings. One thing is clear, the pursuit of justice in Sudan could mean more chaos and suffering in the short term. Hilary Anderson, BBC News. The indictment of the Sudanese president is the first time that the International Criminal Court has charged a serving head of state. Earlier, I spoke to the deputy Sudanese ambassador to the United States, Saleh el Janet, who told me the move damages the prospects for peace in Sudan. We think such announcement of today is being very insensitive to the realities and the situation in the Sudan. Uh, what is at stake now is not just uh, uh, trying to solve problems, but rather than creating problems. And what is at stake here is not just mm, persons, but country and the population. And we think this, is, this will have its repercussion on all the country, and particularly on the situation in Darfur. I mean negative impact on the situation in Darfur. What do you mean by that? What could happen? Uh, I think it's... it's, it's the Ocampo's announcement of today is very insensitive to the current situation in Darfur because it will have a negative impact 
on all aspects of the problems in Darfur, particularly speaking about the humanitarian affairs, security, and most importantly on the political solution to the crisis of Darfur, which is all of the parties now are in part on, and all rebels, government, and international community are all asking about a, a peaceful political solution to the problem. Does this announcement contribute to this goal? I doubt very much. But what you're saying, is that an implicit threat on the part of Sudan to stop any progress over Darfur? Uh, it's not that, because we have heard the statement from Sudan officials today stressing that they are committed to their uh, agreements, uh, peace agreements with the South, with the East, and, and the DPA, especially in Darfur. But what we are trying to say is that uh, we know all that there are uh, outside dimension to the conflict of Darfur. I mean, in neighboring countries, we have seen the attack on Undurman, uh, which has clearly demonstrated that the rebels in Darfur are internationally, regionally bad. So what message are uh, this sent to them? Is that just continue uh, your attacks, your endeavor for a military solution to the to conflict, and forget about the a political solution to the, to the problem or the crisis in Darfur. Do you not accept that the, the government of Sudan itself, that Khartoum could do more to stop these attacks and to shore up the position of the UN force? Exactly. This is what we are trying to do all over these years. We have now engaged in, in but very... But it's taken so long for the peacekeeping force to start to get to, to be running its uh, mission. Yeah. Khartoum could do more. You, you, the words are there, but yeah. do you have the actions behind it? Yeah, of course we are doing our, our, our part, but it's not, the whole process will not depend on Sudan. We are not supposed to be providing uh, troops. We are supposed to be providing logistical support and, 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 and other internal facilities. What would your advice be to the UN now, mm. those uh, UN and African Union peacekeepers on the ground? Yeah. The UN has said today it's going to start pulling out some of its people. Is there reason for them to be worried about consequences, afraid? Uh, we cannot use the term afraid because uh, we think this is what I have started with, that this insensitive announcement of today to the realities of the situation in Darfur uh, is spreading uh, fear and spreading fear that there, there could be some repercussions there. The Sudanese ambassador speaking to me just a little earlier.